Hello YouTube. Hi, my name is Mark and this is Nixon Motorsports. This channel is all about motorsports from racing to exotic cars and even simulators. So today's video, this is data acquisition. It's an overview. It's a video that I, I felt was overdue. I've had a lot of drivers over the years talk to me about, you know, why data acquisition? You know, what's the big deal? Why should I care? So this is not a thorough walkthrough about using data acquisition in detail, um, but it's a discussion um, on why you may care and, and why you should possibly look into data acquisition for a racer, okay? So with that, let's get into it. All right, so let's talk about data acquisition. Again, um, this is from my perspective, and um, this is from a racer's view, if you will. And again, you know, what I'm gonna share with you is just, you know, it's my opinion, right? And, and um, you may agree or disagree with some of my points, and, and that's totally fine. Um, I've learned over the last 20 some odd years of racing why data is so important and I simply just want to share some of that today for for any one of you racers out there who um, who maybe use data maybe maybe have never um, intimidated by it whatever that may be uh, so so I want to get into that discussion itself so let's start with the basic overview when I talk about data acquisition what what am I referring to um, I think of it this way, again, from my mindset, um, you really have two, two types of data. You have static, static data, and you have um, dynamic or real-time data. Both of them are very important. And both are logged and should be logged. And um, analysis software then can step in and help you understand what that data is. So when I refer to static data, what am I talking about? I'm talking about nothing more than logging, recording, virtually every parameter on the race car uh, that you can. So if you think of everything in the chassis, I mean, all the different changes that you do um, before you, you roll on track, right? Um, weather conditions, um, I, I don't know, things like your camber settings, your cold tire pressure settings, on and on and on. That list is pretty long. In fact, uh, I, I record about 180 some odd parameters just on the static data collection side. And I'll show you that here in a few minutes. So on the dynamic side, I'm referring to, as you would think of more typically, a data acquisition, it's, it has channels, and those channels are basically different sensors that are measuring um, anything from analog signals to digital I.O. signals, and on and on. And th those channels, those sensors are um, recorded, logged, real time while, while the car, the race car, is on track. Um, and they can be downloaded um, and extracted and moved into a analysis software um, following runs, right? So that's the basic difference from, from dynamic or static data as I see it. Okay, so that's a basic, you know, what is data acquisition um, discussion. And again, before I continue and go further, I will have other videos um, down the road that will get into various as aspects of uh, data um, and how data can help you as a driver and more into the actual doing and um, overview and review of some of the different channels and what it means, right? This is not the video for that. There'll be probably multiple videos on that topic alone. Um, it's pretty extensive. Um, but let's talk about you as the racer, why, why you may care about data. Um, Look, and I, I understand data can be intimidated, uh, intimidating for some who, um, who feel it's past their reach. Um, if you're a small team or an owner-driver, um, like I've been for, for many, many years, um, data is just another, it's another thing you, you have to deal with. And again, the data, the squiggly lines, the bits and such, 
may not mean much to you. I get that. Um, now, if you're a team where you have race engineers, you know, your data engineers, you got multiple drivers, that is, that is pretty important. It's important to both though. And let me, try to, let me try to express that again from my eyes. So let me talk to it, maybe let me talk to it about this way. So while I think everybody will fundamentally agree that, you know, look, data, data acquisition is important. You know, it shows me my lap times, you know, on a very simplistic view, maybe it, 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 it logs a couple of the things like speed or whatever not that you may care about or track maps and so on. But let's think about it from a driver's lens, right? Uh, as a driver on track, um, a driver will sense and feel the car, how the car is behaving. And a driver will know when the car is working, when it's not, right? When a car has, uh, oh, I don't know, uh, it's loose on exit, maybe it has oversteer, it's understeery, whatever it is, right? A driver will, will sense that and pick that up right away. And, and, and speaking to all of you racers, look, you know when your car is hooked up, when it's working well, right? You roll on track, and I can think about it from my mind, Rolling on track and, and almost, at least for me, almost an immediate feel of, ah, man, you, you know, ah, the car feels great. Um, you know, it's, it's go fast time, right? Um, my point of sharing all that, drivers require this thing called confidence. Confidence is, is I would say, a subconscious mental state where where you know, and it's, it can't be faked, by the way. Um, for an example, if you're in the pits and your crew asks you, how's the car feeling? Or, you know, and you go, oh, it's great. I feel really confident. Uh, okay, maybe you do, maybe you don't. Um, confidence cannot be faked. But when confidence is real, the driver's able to extract those fractions more out of the race car, more than you would you would have thought possible. I, I've experienced that multiple times. And from a driver's point of view, in the car, in the heat of a battle, racing, pushing for the limits on qualifying, whatever those moments, when your confidence is very, very high, you just are able to extract massive amounts out of the race car. I love that feeling. I'm sure I'm speaking to many of you who know what I'm talking about. Okay. Come back to data acquisition. Why do you care? Well, um, how do you know that that car, when your confidence is very high, is its absolute best? How do you know? The only way you can tell is by data. And the difference between maybe one or two, you know, in positions or final results, whatever it may be, those fractional differences that you can find with data are really difficult to find or feel in the race car. Your confidence may be extremely high. You may be on the edge and you feel the car is just hooked up and it's awesome. Don't touch it, right? But data, strong data acquisition and understanding of data acquisition allows you to move those fractional differences where maybe your lateral grip improves a tenth or whatever that may be that ultimately enhances even further the car's performance and behavior. And that's my belief of data acquisition and why it's so fundamentally important. It allows a driver to extract the absolute best out of his or her race car. I hope that makes sense. Now, if you're a team, and you have multiple drivers, you know, there's another whole topic on that. But if you think about it from a team point of view, a race engineer, you know, the data engineers, let's be honest with ourselves, right? As racers, some racers are pretty good at um, verbalizing, expressing back to their crew how the car is behaving. You know, just on track, you come in, you know, to be able to dissect turn two, turn three, you know, various different places around the track, what you're focused on. Some drivers, drivers are quite good at that. I would argue, most are not, 
Um, most drivers, especially newer drivers learning, coming to terms with their race car, the track, whatever it may be, um, it's a certain art and craft to be able to capture, retain all the nuances and little details the race car is doing while you're on track. I, I, I say all that not to beat us up as drivers over the head, but it, it's, it's, the, it's the appreciation and understanding from a, from a race team's point of view. Data is just a critical element to supplement, not replace, supplement what the driver is conveying to them um, uh, from a team point of view. And, and even more so if you have multiple drivers, um, the, you know, this, this normalizes things, right? Because different drivers will feel different things and so on. Hope that makes sense to you. So before I pan down here, and I'll show you some data just really quick, just highlight a few little things. Um, what I log statically and what I look at dynamically. Um, let, me, let me start with this. As a racer, um, if you're a racer who has no data acquisition, um, you, want, you want to start using some data acquisition, here's what I would recommend. Start, start small. You don't need to invest you know, hundreds of millions of dollars into uh, um, some crazy over-the-top data acquisition system. But I would strongly recommend you start with a data acquisition system one that is expandable. You want to make sure that whatever you start with, um, that that acquisition system has enough expandability as far in the future as you can see. And that allows you to start small and, and build over time. Now, there are many good ones out there. I'm not going to get into that. I'm, this, you know, this, this video is not an endorsement of, of one or another. I've used I've used uh, Pi systems years back. I've used um, you know AIM quite a bit, a um, lot of MoTeC. So um, it depends on budget and so on and your needs, right? The um, where to start conversation though. Here's what I would recommend. Um, if you're new into data acquisition, the very basic fundamentals. Not statically, I'll come back to that, but dynamic logging real time in your race car. Um, your engine's vital signs, pretty important. I would recommend um, all of your basic channel sensory input for your engine, right? You're, you, you want to know, obviously, your oil pressure. Um, you should probably monitor your oil temperature. Um, your coolant temperature is very important. I would actually argue coolant pressure is pretty important. Um, and I'll say that because if you have a um, water system failure on track, uh, let's, let's say you had a hose break, you, you lose all water um, pressure immediately, your engine will superheat, you'll fry a motor before you know it, before your alarms tell you, you know, stop, stop, stop. So you get my point. So. Uh, coolant pressure is a very important one. Not, not a lot of people do that, I, but I would say that's in the critical path uh, to start with. Clearly gear position, clearly RPM. Um, I, I missed a couple off the off memory here, but you know those are the, the real basics for the engine side. On the driver side, um, you, you want driver input. Um, I, I would say that that's in the, not critical path, but from a basic data system starting, I would highly recommend you want race or driver input. So steering position, throttle position, gear, braking, brake bias. So you want brake pressure for your front, brake pressure for your rear, that type of thing. So I would say those are your absolute basics. Now you're going to need lap time. So most of the modern uh, data act systems have uh, GPS um, capability. Uh, GPS is, is good um, because in, uh, in those systems it, it provides um, you know, speed, uh, at least GPS based speed. It gives you lap time based on uh, lap long positions on the track. It's, it's very simple. Just keep in mind that um, basic stand, stand up or basic GPS systems on the lower end of the scale are 
Um, our, their frequency of update is, I think they're only 10 hertz. Um, 10 hertz is not that frequent, and when cars are doing 150 miles an hour, whatever that may be, its ability to track and log um, in a time period that's needed is, is loose, right? So um, on the higher end of the scale, 20 hertz GPSs are, are better. Uh, so kind of keep that in mind. You could always upgrade that over time. Now, the other piece, you know, data acquisition systems are um, virtually all of them have that, uh, where they have uh, gyro or, 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 excuse me, accelerometers uh, in, some have gyros, uh, accelerometers in the module. Uh, so you don't need to add anything there, but you need accelerometers. Uh, that will give you your lat, long, vertical, um, acceleration in the race car so that's needed for track maps it also gives you your um, important um, lateral G's for uh, understanding cornering capabilities and so on so that's the basic um, the basic overview of what I, I would recommend is the start that you need for a data acquisition system all right so so um, let me talk about let me talk about static data and why I think that's so important and you know simple uses and how, how you can approach that. Let me, let me pan over here to my computer screen. Um, now this is, I use MoTeC um, exclusively on, on this race car, um, but if I pan over here, all right, this is pretty ugly and some of you will comment, oh my God, it's just way too much data. <laughs> Um, one beauty, one thing I love about MoTeC, many things I love about MoTeC, but one thing I love about it is it allows you to use Excel docs, a single Excel doc, um, as static input that loads into your analysis software. So here I have, um, and this is all um, customizable, of course, right? I have over 180 channels that I use here um, if I just scroll over, I can keep going and keep going and keep going. But I, I use Excel, this document, to record virtually every change that I have on the race car. So before I roll on track for every single session, I record, um, I don't know, fuel load, cold tire pressures, cambers, right? You get it. it it's a it's pretty extensive list. That's important. I have not seen, uh, I've seen some, but not a lot of racers do that, at least when they're first starting. They take a couple scribble notes and so on. That's not enough. There's too much changing. Um, um, there's too much changing for any one person to remember uh, anything even close to how and what the car was set up during what time periods. You need that to be able to go back over time. When you're making changes to the race car, you, you need to be able to go back and see, ah, uh, I did that. And so, you know, driver pre-run pre notes, driver post-run no notes. In fact, I do that as well, too. If I go back over here, I go session notes. And here I just, here I have a particular uh, daytime run. I show my kind of pre-run notes and post-run notes. And this, that's what I use from a driver just my ideas and thoughts, that's where I capture my, um, my notes, again, so I can go back and recall, or the team can, at some later point. So let me talk about the dynamic data, the actual um, data collection in the race car. Um, you know, I have tons of data on my Formula 1000 here, and it is so valuable. Look, I get it. It can be data overloading. Um, that definitely is a possibility. So start small and you can build on that. But um, let me just show you a couple examples here really quick. And this is not intended to, to go crazy on you, but I just want to try to tie this together. So if I pan over to my computer, a bunch of little busy stuff, right? Um, <laughs> so this is a particular run um, when was this? This was a run back uh, here this last May. So, so there I, I did, what, about 12, 13 sub-on laps. Um, what's, in, what's cool about this, so this view, by the way, this is just a single view. This is the um, looking at the 
inner carcass temperature. So these are 16 channels of temperature across the inside carcass of the tire. So there's the front, front left, front right, rear left, rear right. That's, that's what this is. And then you have from, a, from an inside to outside through, through each of these, right, if that makes sense. I, it, this isn't really a discussion about this channel specifically, but what I wanted to show you, so this is captured real time. This is logged from the race car on track. Over on this side of the screen, um, here I have some static data. Some's dynamic, but for an example, um, what are the front tires I'm running? What are the compounds? Um, what are the cold tire pressures? And so on, right? Um, if, if I roll over here to this side, I'm showing downforce, front, rear, gyro, kind of the roll and pitch of the race car. That, anyway, that's just an example. Um, and if I roll back here again, if I can grab my, my mouse. So if I roll back here, uh, so this is um, a hierarchy of different worksheets that I have within MoTeC itself, right? Now, I will tell you this, MoTeC, actually this is true for AIM and all the others, you, you know, all of this is something that you have to create. It's not this automatic, you know, here's everything set up for you. You start at zero, so uh, I'm just sharing that with you. But if I, um, oh, I don't know, if I go to, if I go to the driver um, worksheet itself, you know, I can pan out here so you can see more of it, but if I can move, I could move my, my, cursor around here, you can see different, uh, different channels moving. Um, if I roll over here, you can see, you can see me, this is on Eagles Canyon, so there's the track map that it creates, and, uh, and so on. So that's just, that's just one example. Um, again, I have many, just in the driver category, you know, there's, there's maybe a dozen or so worksheets. You know, so here's another one just on downforce. And again, all of these, uh, or the majority of these, are static data that's pulled in from the Excel document. So wing angles, front, rear, uh, on and on, right? And um, that allows me to pull it all together. Um, these are static plots that, sh excuse me, these are dynamic plots that show me downforce in this example. Um, this is showing based on ride height, laser ride height on the front of the, of the race car um, and the amount of downforce that it creates. Um, so it allows you to stand back and see that visually. Um, anyway, so those are just a couple examples that are, um, that are pretty cool. I love this one too. So I created this a while ago. This is a, a again, downforce um, example. This is the track map. Um, and it's showing me track map based on downforce itself. And I can roll over here and I can see, I can see front, rear, total downforce, percentages, on and on and on and on. Um, you get the idea. So that's just a couple examples. And trying to tie in static and dynamic, you absolutely need both. And um, having data acquisition and relying on it by itself is not enough. Your um, need to log all of your static parameters. Uh, again, I highly recommend that you do that. So before I see all the comments, and I'm sure I'll see a few on this, um, and by the way, send your comments. It's any question you have, please. Um, I'll, I'll try to get back to you as quick as I can. Um, you know, what data acquisition should you use? So let me start with AIM. I think AIM is among, um, you know, one of the most popular, at least in amateur racing today. Uh, AIM in general is, I would say, a, a good start. Um, a, a pretty good expandable, their top of the line logger is their EVO 5. Um, it, it's, 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 it's capable, it has enough channel support where um, that would probably handle uh, the majority of your needs. Um, one one uh, downfall in my view is it, its channel frequency. Uh, one, I, f I forget the number of channels it has. Uh, there is some um, lower limit than more of the high-end systems, but um, it, 
the bigger, um, I, I would say, negative um, is their maximum uh, frequency um, logging capability per channel is 200 hertz. And that, in most cases, is fine. Um, but, it, you know, so for an example, like uh, fluid temperature changes, right? 200 hertz is, is way overkill for that. But 200 hertz is not sufficient if you're going to be logging uh, suspension data. You know, you need at least 500 hertz, if not 1,000 hertz or so, to be able to do that. So kind of keep that in mind. Um, you could always upgrade and you know, switch to another data acquisition system in the future So if, if you see the need. Um, but keep that in mind. Um, and, and then from there, switching over to, and you, you probably can tell over and over, you know, I'm a, I'm a big MoTeC, MoTeC uh, uh, supporter, uh, not sponsored by MoTeC, by the way. Um, we, we do work with them really close, but just to, to get that out there, this, uh, this is just pure opinion on my side. I've used MoTeC many times now in many different cars. It is a professional grade system. You have an enormous amount of, of channel capability and channel frequencies at 1000 hertz uh, and above. It is um, a phenomenal um, data system itself. You can use MoTeC just for a data logger and use whatever ECU and, and such uh, that you want. That's fine. Um, but I, I would highly recommend if you have the budget, it's, it's going to be a couple bucks more than an AIM solution for sure. But uh, I would highly recommend you look at MoTeC. And, um, um, those are the systems, or at least primary ones, that I would, I would say you should consider. Hey, so as I, as I wrap up with uh, this video, though, um, I do want to just go back to the why conversation again. As intimidation as data may be, support it, learn it, spend the time to get to know it. Those fractional differences that you may find with a thorough understanding of the race car behavior, again, not just not removing your driver feeling and, and you know the feeling in your seat, so to speak. Data supports that, and again, it allows. I've experienced that those fine-tuning aspects or fractional gains of positive benefit that you'll have as a racer. Um, that's why I support it, um, and I, I, I see data acquisition as a critical tool for any driver or team uh, that uh, wants to excel to the top levels of motorsports, okay? Okay, that's it for this video. Um, I, will have, I will have a handful of videos coming out um, over the course of the next six months or so where I get into some specifics of, of data, um, why I, I monitor certain channels, how I tie that in, into uh, the analysis software, what am I looking for as a driver. Um, I think you'll find a lot of those to be of interest. Um, again, they'll be much more uh, detailed uh, than this quick overview, but uh, you'll see those coming. If you have ideas, you know, shoot me a note on that as well. Um, I appreciate you watching, and if you haven't subscribed, you know, everybody asks that. <laughs> I hate asking that, but please consider if you would, right? Um, I, I would appreciate that. Subscribe to the channel if you would. Um, uh, again, comments, thoughts, shoot them across as frequently as you would like. I have a ton of, of videos coming out over this winter project. Um, I think you'll find some of them of interest. I want to drag you along and show you and talk to you about uh, some of the work that I'm doing on the race car, but that's it for now. I appreciate you watching and until next time, all right, ciao.